Israel is pressing ahead with a steadily military campaign against the Gaza Strip. At least 11 Palestinians have lost their lives in fresh airstrikes on the coastal territory. The raids, which targeted an area in Gaza City, have also injured a number of other Gazans. An earlier strike on Rafah crossing in southern Gaza wounded several other Gazans. Meanwhile, Hamas's military wing, the Qassam Brigades, captured an Israeli drone in Shijaya district. Over 2,130 Palestinians have been killed since Tel Aviv launched its onslaught on Gaza. Nearly 570 of them are children, and nearly 11,000 others have been injured. Palestinian officials say that the coastal enclave is suffering from a serious shortage of medical supplies. Of course, Mana Hishamana joins us from the Gaza Strip to update us on the situation there on the ground. Hishamana, uh, when we're looking at the uh, uh, spate of attacks from Israel, uh, do you see that being much less than what it was before? And uh, tell us a little bit more about what areas they are targeting and what indeed they are targeting. Uh, the latest reports indicate that a rather famous mosque in the Gaza Strip, I believe, has been the target of the Israeli airstrike. Yes, indeed. Israel has been uh, targeting since the collapse of the uh, last truce last Tuesday, um, has been targeting multiple uh, locations. Uh, I'm talking about houses, uh, residential towers, mosques, uh, empty squares, farmlands. Everything in Gaza Strip is now under attack as the Israeli uh, war machines uh, is not just targeting the, uh, the buildings or the farms, it's, it's also targeting the civilians deliberately. Yesterday, last night, close to Shifa Hospital, the latest, the latest attack happened is that Israeli drones fired missiles against a group of civilians standing in the street which are very close to one of the schools that inhabit refugees fled from the crisis areas uh, in, uh, either in the north or the east of Gaza Strip in Shijaya or in Beit Hanun. Uh, the result of that attack is that two civilians were killed immediately and uh, at least 10 casualties resulted from that incident. This is a small example of the uh, nature of attacking that Israel has been pursuing since, the, since, the, uh, since it has named its operation against the civilians in Gaza Strip and not just targeting the resistance or the missiles or the mortar shells or even the tunnels. Israel is rather targeting the will of the Palestinian people to keep uh, uh, struggling for their freedom in Gaza Strip as well as the aggression practice against them in the West Bank in different uh, uh, shapes. Now I'm standing behind this uh, uh, tower which was destroyed uh, last Saturday. A 12-story building uh, inhabits more than uh, 45 families. Now they are all displayed. Some of the families also who fled from Khuza'a uh, to the south of Gaza Strip in Khan Yunus took refuge in these uh, houses and apartments close to their families. As you can see also, the surrounding buildings over there have been uh, damaged uh, uh, severely as most of the windows and the balconies uh, which are uh, close to that uh, location have been damaged. The people inside there could be, uh, any of them could be killed. Any child inside there could uh, uh, suffer from any sharpness coming out from the rubble uh, 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 as this building was collapsing. This is the same uh, situation for all the locations that are being targeted uh, on the premises of at least 600 meters. All they have houses inside that premises have been damaged only due to that, uh, only one attack. So Israel is not just targeting the civilians or their uh, uh, buildings or houses or farms, it's, it's also targeting the... No, it looks like we may have lost Hisham Mana there. Anyways, get an idea about uh, what's going on on the ground there for an analytical perspective. Let's bring in Vanessa Bailey. She's the director of the Wall Will Fall campaign and she joins us from Paris. Mr. Billy, it's hard to imagine that after the truce talks failed that another 200 plus Palestinians have been killed, the grand total at this point over 2,100. Uh, and yet when you have a four-year-old Israeli child uh, that uh, was killed, that made headlines and that's a big deal. Uh, and I have to again bring the, and highlight this because it really shows uh, the life of a Palestinian versus that of an Israeli obviously is much less. And on top of that, hard to believe that Israel is actually conducting airstrikes in the Gaza Strip in the form and fashion that it is. Uh, why is the international community not reacting to this, Vanessa Bailey? That's a very good question. Um, I just posted a story about a couple of hours ago about um, a tiny baby that was pulled out from underneath his mother's body, um, and he was still breastfeeding at the time. 
Um, these stories are, are not one-offs, as the story is with the Israeli child, may his soul rest in peace. We're not going to um, condone or accept the death of any child in this conflict. But it is true that the international community appears to be simply shrugging its shoulders or saying that this violence must stop, but actually doing nothing to stem the river of blood that is continuously flowing through Gazan streets. And uh, when we want to take a look at the resumption of truce talks, the latest being that uh, Hamas and the Palestinian factions have agreed to, uh, uh, to start talks uh, if the border crossings were to be open, just so they can get some aid, they're waiting for Israel's response. You would think that mm -hmm. there would be some pressure on Israel to at least allow that to happen uh, and have some relief for the Gazans. Listen, the, the, the ceasefires, in my opinion and in the opinion of the majority of the people in Gaza that I speak to on a daily basis, are, a, are becoming a joke. They're not only a joke, they're another form of psychological torment for these people. Because every time there is a rumor, as there was last night in the midst of all the bombing, of an imminent ceasefire, people cling on to this thread of hope in the midst of all the carnage. And then, of course, it, it, it falls flat on its face again. Um, the terms of the ceasefire that I understand it at the moment are to open the Rafa border in particular to allow humanitarian aid in. Now, let's just clarify here. Egypt, throughout this conflict, of the 10,500 plus wounded, has allowed out 233. Of those 233, only six, as far as I'm aware from reports yesterday, have made it to Cairo for treatment. The remainder are being held in El Arish Hospital and are being mistreated and neglected to the point where one man has got in touch with his family in Gaza and begged to be allowed home to die with dignity. This is the humanitarian truth that we're talking about. This is the level of humanitarian aid that we're talking about from Egypt. So I can understand the frustration, the rage, and the, the, the sheer ridicule that is being poured upon any sort of political uh, discussion by the people of Gaza. Thank you very much for that. Vanessa Billy, director of the Wall Will Fall campaign from Paris.